<laughs> it's amazing. There's the size of these fish now that are coming up in the water. It's incredible. It just shows you what, uh, when you're feeding, what can happen. I bet it's another one of those, oh, another one of those big chub, I think. Just feeding. These are the fish that you miss. What a wonderful day for fishing. I'm here at Barford Lakes and I thought what I'd do today, it's early spring, but it's very, very warm today. And I've picked a peg, which is quite deep. It's about probably three meters, three and a half meters deep. I thought what I'd do is show you exactly how to catch fish from that one area, but different depths. I'm gonna start up in the water probably about six foot deep, which would be mid-water, to try and catch some roach and silverfish. You always want to do that before you start fishing, you know, something to get your swim going. Before I do that, I'm going to cup in some pellets and corn on the bottom, so I get a good bed of feed. Now this swim, three or four metres deep, so good depth, I'm going to cup in two or three potfuls of bait to get some carp and some skimmers into the peg then loose feed over the top and the fish actually come in, they come up. I'm gonna, and it, I'm gonna finish up then catching carp at mid-water, sort of six foot deep with pellets. So three different styles from the same distance out, about 13 meters, but like three different pegs, exactly at the same distance, but at different depths. And it's gonna be a brilliant day, I know it is. Now, before I actually start fishing, as I said, I'm going to feed on the bottom with a pole cup. And these are three mil, they're carp pellets. They are not trout pellets. Trout pellets in most places are banned. These have got less oil than trout pellets. They're carp pellets. These particular ones are supplied by Barford Lakes. They, you have to use them. The normal ones, of course, but you can't get Barford Lakes ones everywhere. The normal ones I use are the Vandenine fish meal. Exactly the same, three millimetre pellets, fish meal pellets. These are brilliant for feeding, nice and heavy, they go straight to the bottom. Now we want to get a good bed of feed down there so that there's plenty down there for the fish to keep them there. They come in and, and on the bottom and then they'll gradually work their way up the peg. But Vandenine, fish meal, carp pellets. They've got a special enhancer called Swim Stim, which is, really stimulates the fish. So brilliant that for feeding. So now I'm going to pot, pot in three good potfuls of pellet and corn, because they love sweet corn, particularly the bream here, they love sweet corn. So I'm going to pot a mixture of feeding. Now these, these are a fairly new pole cup from Drennan. They're actually clear, you can see what you're doing, see what you're putting in. It's good for the camera as well, he can see what I'm doing. So we can put this and a good cupful of these pellets. See how many you can get in there? There's a quarter of 250 milliliters, so a quarter of a litre, there's a lot of pellets in there. Top it up with sweet corn. There, look at that. That goes in, but it goes straight to the bottom before the fish can actually get into it. So you get, it's important to get something down on the ground. So I'm going to put in, and the brilliant thing about a pole cup is that you can actually place your bait exactly where your float's gonna be. I don't know whoever thought of the idea of this, but um, I bet he never made as much money out of it as he should have done. So I've got that on a nice stiff one. I'm gonna put three of these in, three good potfuls. And you need to be careful when you're shipping out with the pole cup because what happens is if you get any uneven action, you can flick all the bait out of the cup itself. So, so try to, to be as smooth as possible when you're shipping out. And you can even see on there, see the bend in the pole there with the weight of that pellet and corn. So I'm fishing out at 13 metres, I'm going to put three good potfuls. I've got an idea, it's going to be a brilliant day today, so I'm going to put three good potfuls. And I'm actually 
making a bit of noise when I put that in as well, just to help the fish really are attracted by noise. So just to, to sort of make a little bit of difference, get, get the fish interested. So I'm gonna put three of those potfuls out. Just get the fish interested in what's going on. It's incredible how much stuff you can get in here. Now this is going in for later on. You know, I'm putting this in now and I'm gonna fish over the top much higher up. I'm not going to fish on this. This is sort of going three, four metres deep. I'm going to fish half depth. So I'm not going to be fishing on this. Give the fish plenty of time to settle on it. Another big pot full. And then this one will go exactly where the other one went. Exactly. As I say, just be careful when you ship out. Take your time. Really noisy, this pole, as you're shipping out. You don't seem to notice it when you're actually fishing. And then, just probably about a foot above the water, shake them pellets in, and corn. Nice mixture going in there. Never be frightened to put that in. That's, that's going on the bottom. Should enable us to catch some big fish. More pellets, more corn. So three good potfuls, which is almost three quarters of a litre of bait. Not quite filled it right up because it is fairly heavy, this. And as I say, you need to take real care. But you imagine, if you look in that pot, there's hundreds and hundreds of pellets in there. You'll see when they drop on the water, hundreds of pellets. Plenty of food. You can shake it about a bit, but it, but it's going exactly where you want it to. So that's there, and it's there for later. It's not for fishing on now. Now I'm going to start loose feeding over the top with casters to catch silverfish, roach, whatever else comes along, maybe odd chub, but uh, anything really. That's left there for later. Now I'm going to start fishing three feet deep. I mean, the swim is, is four meters, three or four meters. And I'm going to use single red maggot to try and catch some silverfish. What happens on a lot of these commercial fisheries is that everybody ignores the silverfish. There's always good roach, rud, chub sometimes to be caught on normal maggots, light baits, small baits, small hooks. And we need to exploit those. And, and what it does, it, it gives the carp a little bit of time to become confident. Don't go straight for them. We fed on the bottom. We're going to fish now over the top, directly over where I've fed, and loose feed with casters to try and get some silver fish. Actually, it attracts everything into your peg. We probably could hook a carp, but, but the likelihood is that we're going to catch some good quality silverfish first. I'm loose feeding with casters, and then immediately a bite. There's a fish on straight away. Look at that, first cast. <laughs> it's brilliant. See, so what you can do, you can catch these fish. Just catch these fish. This one's a nice little rud. while the carp are getting confident. Small rod there, I'll just net that one. You can see the red maggot out of its mouth. Beautiful coloured fish they are. Only small that one, but that's, that's sort of normal. Look at that red maggot out of its mouth there. But that's, that's normal to start. We'll probably catch some bigger fish than that, we will. And the carp will be settling down while we're feeding. Got a barbless hook on there, so it, easily comes out. Lovely little rud, about three ounces. There. That was a brilliant start, catching one straight away, but this is what often happens on these commercial fisheries. And it's great just to let the carp have a rest. You know, keep feeding. I'm feeding with casters up in the water. Just keep feeding to draw everything in and straight away there's one on. That's brilliant. 
This looks like a good fish. What I'm going to do, I can actually feed while I'm playing the fish. I bet this is a good roach or rud. I'm fishing with a fairly light elastic, not fishing too heavy a gear, just trying to exploit other fish. Just while I'm waiting for the carp to start feeding. This looks like a oh, it's an up, lovely rud. A bit bigger than the last one, so obviously they're coming round to those loose feed casters. Oh yeah, definitely a bit bigger, probably four or five ounces this one. Beautiful fish. It's really actually, it smashed that cast, that uh, maggot. Really smashed it. Look at the colours on that fish. Lovely red tinge fins. Hooked perfectly. Beautiful condition. What a great start. So just a single red maggot just to get things going. Single red maggot, that's, maggots will, will start fish feeding, you know, straight away they'll start feeding. You, it will catch you something. And all the time your bigger fish are being left alone so they're building up confidence. And this really is a secret of having a good day's fishing. You catch all the time. And I've specifically, although this is a great carp water, I've specifically targeted these silver fish in the beginning. You can bet your life there's still more out there. And it's great fun because almost every cast you will get a bite. Just make sure you feed, nice loose feed with casters. I'm putting a good pouch full in as well because, it's, I mean, it's a warm day. Early spring, but, the, but it's very, very warm. A good pouch full of casters. Oh, in again straight away. <laughs> I think this is a bigger fish, this one. I mean, you're missing all this action. If you, if you ignore them fish, you're missing all this early action. I bet actually, if you came here and just fished for these silver fish, you could probably catch probably 20 or 30 pound of, of roach and rud. Every cast you go in, you'd catch a fish. You can see that, that's number six elastic, but you can see it's doing its job, pulling out. Oh, this is a terrific roach, this one. <laughs> I wonder how big this is. Probably 10 or 12 ounces. <laughs> terrific fishing. So it's a fish every cast. Actually, it's got a little white mark just on the top. I don't know where it got that from, but superb conditioned fish. And it's hooked just inside the mouth, so I'll need my disgorger. Just be very careful, just inside the mouth. Let me show you that one, eh? Probably 10 or 12 ounces. Terrific. These are the fish you're missing. These are the fish. If you don't have a go for them, you miss them completely. Well, I don't know what this one is. Well, that's whizzed away. Didn't expect that. I mean, I'm only fishing fairly light gear. Don't think it's a carp, but it, it could well be a big chub or something. Whatever it is, it's a good fish. Great to catch one like this so early. Look at that elastic, look. There must be a metre, metre or more of that out of the water. Seems to be a lot of planes about today. It's, uh, we're quite near an RAF base here and uh, there's always a few planes flying over. Oh, this is a great, this is a, I don't know, I honestly don't know what this fish is. It's on light gear. I actually, what I actually did was I, I slipped double cast. I thought, well, I was fishing maggot. I thought, oh, well, I'll put two casters on. So I was feeding caster. And this can quite often happen. The big fish that are feeding exclusively on casters, one of them took it. I wonder what it is. Do you know what, this is a great thing about fishing. Now this is why it's, oh, what is it? It's, 
I think it's a really big chub. Oh, this is great. <laughs> you can see that I've only got a six elastic on there. Number six elastic, so it's doing, look at that for a fish. <laughs> you, I mean, you come to fish carp and they, look, this is typical silver fish. A big chub, oh, well over two pounds. What a bonus. <laughs> as soon as I slip that double caster on the hook, just have a look at this fish. Up in the water, Just don't expect to catch these fish. Oops, so hard fighting. Look at that, terrific. Only just hooked in the lip. Just, I'm gonna use my disgorger though, just to get on the edge of it. I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll put this one in the net, slip this in the net. <laughs> put up a heck of a fight. Put this in the net and then we'll have a look at the rig that I'm using. This, this, this light rig for fishing up in the water for this type of fish. Now, as I said, it's a light rig. I'm just gonna slip off this one section. I actually had to leave because it was such a big fish. I left an extra section on, on the, on the pole to land it. So I'm using the top three kit of my pole and I've actually got the elastic going all the way through that. So it's going through three sections. But the hook, let's start from the business end. The hook, it's only a small hook. It's a size 20. Another one of those planes, there's loads of them about today. Size 20, two Bettini 808. A nice fine hook, but very, very strong. And then the line is 09, which is probably about two pound breaking strain, so reasonably heavy, so like that big fish I just caught, you can land it. The main line is 012, which is three pound breaking strain. And I've, I've, I've actually joined the two with a four turn water knot. You can just about see it there, four turn water knot. You can see I've got a small shot, a number, 11 shot tight against that knot. And then we can move up the float. I've actually got a small bulk there of seven, number 10 shot. So a little bulk just to drop down and then, then it's sort of midway, so it drops down and goes through. The float is 0.4 of a gram, four fourteens. It's a Drennan pinky float. It's got a small cane bristle, nice visible bristle, carbon stem, a very light weight float, you know, very, very small float. And then the elastic, which I said was a number six, it's a number six Camasan elastic. And it's going all the way through those three sections. So there's plenty of room. If I do hook a big fish, I can actually land probably a six pound carp on this gear you know, without getting broken. So you always have to match your elastic to your hook. You know, don't use sort of light line and small hooks with heavy elastic. Your elastic has to give, otherwise you just bump everything. So very simple rig to catch plenty of fish. It's important when you're catching these, these fish, particularly when you're fishing up in the water, you must keep the bait going in all the time. Imagine that the fish, if you stop feeding, the fish will just drop away. They will go deeper and they will fall out of your peg. So you need all the time, I'm loose feeding casters. And it's always the most important thing when you're actually, when you're actually doing it. Just take a note of how I'm holding the pole itself. What you do when, you, when you're feeding with a catapult, Right, I'm feeding with casters, and I actually trap the pole. I actually trap the pole between my leg and my forearm. So it leaves the catapult completely free. I can actually hold this catapult with the right hand, and you do everything in reverse. Instead of pulling the actual catapult back, you push the actual crutch of the catapult forward. It's like that, so you push it forward and release. 
So everything is done in reverse while you trap the pole. And I actually struck then and, and hooked a fish while I was doing it. Struck with my leg and I hooked a, a small fish while I was doing that. So, oh, that's great. Don't know what this small one's doing in my peg. We've been catching nothing but big fish. I say small, it's probably still a two or three ounce roach. But all the time, you must keep feeding. You're trying to keep the fish up in the water. But what it's doing, it's building that peg up for those carp later as well. Because when small fish come in to feed, the big ones are always there, that excites them, you know, and then they have to compete, otherwise they won't get anything. Just unhook this one. Two casters this little roach took. I bet they're really fighting for the bait out there. You got, what you got? Mm -hmm. if, it, if it lasts for 60 minutes, I can go home. <laughs> Look at that for a fish. Tell him he's on the wrong one. I won't get a lot of joy there. <laughs> oh, massive great rud. Beautiful colours. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Now this is a brilliant new product. It's called a pellet pump. And it's actually used for making expander pellets which before you soak them want to float. And they're very difficult actually to make sink to do it quickly and properly. But this is like a vacuum pump. Put your pellets in and any liquid you want and you pull the pump and it sucks the air from the pellet, sucking water into the pellet at the same time and gives you instant sinking expander pellets. I'll just show you how to use it because it's so simple. Just a cap to take off there. I'm going to prepare two different types of expander pellets today for fishing. This particular one are Vandenine, they're, they're a three mil expander pellet. You need, the first job is to put some pellets into the pump itself. Look at those, beautiful. This is probably one of my most favourite baits for carp fishing, expander pellets. Now I'm pouring some of those into the pump, sort of half filling it. You can actually see them in there, half filling. Now the good thing about this pump is if you've got any additives that you like, you know, ones that you, you particularly like, and this one is one that I like for carp. It's a liquid green-lipped mussel. And you can actually squirt some of that into the, into the, some of the flavouring, squirt some of the flavour in there. That will be sucked into the pellet immediately. All you need then is water. Just add water. Just till you fill that up. Put the cap on and then pull the pump so that you get this sort of suction effect. Once it's like that, then you need to turn it over. You can actually see this green. Can you just see that green floating in there? And then you've got to pull this pump back. And as I pull it back, you see all those bubbles coming up there. Look at that, look. See where it's sucking the air out. 
do that a couple of times where it sucks the air out. See all the bubbles forming? Like that. And they're immediately sinking pellets. Done. Normally you have to, it's overnight and it's a heck of a job. I'll pull them again. Right, they are now prepared. All you need to do is leave them for about five minutes soaking in water to get really good. Just about five minutes. I'll just leave them soaking there and then strain that water off and they will gradually swell up. But that's incredible that, how that you can, you can turn floating pellets into sinking ones. Look, these, Every one of those will sink, bump, 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 immediately. It's incredible how it sucks the air out, sucks water in, they'll swell out, but the, the perfect way of doing expander pellets, they're just for the hook. I'm not going to feed with those, so there's tons there, perfect, plenty enough for feeding, and they've got this liquid, thick lip muscle. I'm also going to do some larger ones some six mil, some big ones, just in case. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a great believer into chopping and changing between bait sizes, so let's just quickly repeat that. In with these pellets, and these pellets float. I mean, they want to float. I'll show you on that, on that piece of water there, how these pellets, look, when you drop them in the water, they just, you know, they must float. You'd think, well, it'd take ages for them to sink. But well, these are exactly the same. They're a natural one, so you can put any flavour you want. I'm going to, and in these ones, another favourite carp, a flavour of mine, is Super Scopex. This is brilliant for carp fishing. Carp and bream as well. So I'm going to put some of that in there, sort of an orangey liquid. Mmm, beautiful smell. Tip some water in. So easy to do. Tip the water in. All those pellets come straight to the top where they're floating, but as soon as you suck that air out, suck more water in. Once you've done that, remember you've got to turn it over, turn it upright. All those pellets again, they're all floating, they're all trying to get to the top there, and then you pull it. Can you see all those air bubbles coming out there? You pull it once. So easy to do. Now look, see, can you see all those pellets have now sunk? Every one of them has sunk. Brilliant new tool. I wish I was selling them. <laughs> Struck me beneath there, they got one. I've just actually changed now. I'm on the bottom, fishing on the bottom. I put a bit of sweet corn on. You know where I'd cupped all that bait in earlier? And uh, I'm straight into a fish. I don't know what it is. It's a, Probably, a, I would have thought, perhaps a good bream. Got an orange elastic, look at that, it's a number, number 10 elastic. Heavy enough to cope with carp, but there's some lovely sort of pound, two pound bream in here. I'm guessing this is probably one of those. And they love sweet corn. <laughs> Straight into it. That's that bait that I put down earlier. What happens is you put the bait down, the fish have had an hour or two to come onto it. Is it a bream? It's a good, good fish. Just see it on the surface. Oh, it's a small carp. I honestly thought it was a bream, but it was a small carp straight away into that bait. I say small, it's probably two pound or more. <laughs> That was terrific, but that's what's happened. Just letting the fish, leaving them, giving them time, get on the bait. And immediately, a two pound carp. Real tough one, it's hard to hold. Ever so hard, oh dear. <laughs> really are. Hey, look at that. Beautiful fish, but real all muscle. Two and a half pound, I should think. Got a separate net for that. It's not good to put carp and silverfish together, so I've got one net for carp, one net for silverfish. But what a great start.
This feels like a better one. As soon as I've gone on the bottom, you know, there's better quality fish. I'm not going to say what this one is. The last one I thought was a bream, but I'm guessing this is a carp. And of course, it'll probably be a big bream. It's whizzing round a bit. Sometimes you need to unship a joint more so that it gives you a little bit more pressure. I'll show you later exactly what to do. That's a good fish. Yeah, beautiful fish. <laughs> Lovely. This is why fishing's brilliant, you know. Once you strike and you, you just feel the power of that big fish. See where I've unshipped? I've actually got five sections of the pole here, even though the line is only four sections long. Just gives me a little, little bit more pressure to compensate for the amount of that elastic that's out. That number 10 elastic is doing its job. I wonder what this fish is. You can never tell. This is what I hate, you know. It takes so long to get the fish in. We should be feeding again now. Sort of pouching those pellets in on top of where I'd fed with the cup. I know what I've got to do. I've actually got to come up with a system. It's all right when the fish are in close and you can feed by hand, but I've got to come up with a system where I can actually feed and hold the pole. That would be brilliant. Another big fish. Should be all big fish now. You're on proper baits and hardly a bite from that fish though. Do you know what? It seems to be getting bigger all the time. And you have to play the fish out. You know, that is a powerful fish. You've got to keep playing it, following it round. And actually, while you're playing, when the fish moves, move round with it. Oh, oh, it's just woken up. Started off slow and it, now it's a, just a big, big fish. Really going mad now. Must be five or six metres of elastic out. Well, I'm going to have to feed. I can do it, you know. Have to feed again because that fish is on too long. I can actually hold the pole, hold the pole there, and pouch some more maggots and some more casters, more pellets. Two good pouchfuls of pellet. Trouble with these big fish, they tire you out. What a lovely day to be fishing as well. Just all the time you've got to keep that fish moving. Don't let it go still, keep the fish, put the power on it. There are some tremendous carp in here. There's a lot of double figure carp in here. A lot of double figure carp. Whew. Would you believe I'm going to feed again? I've just got that pole strapped across my leg and putting some more pellets in. Oh. Really am putting a lot of power on this fish. Look at that swan. It's a really friendly swan, that one. I don't want to get it caught up in the line. Yeah, oh, fabulous. I can just every now and again I can see the big, you know, the vortex that the fish make as it comes to the top and you just see this, this big vortex as its tail gets close to the surface. I really am putting a lot of pressure. Wonderful fishy. Fish is still swimming around, it's close in, you can see that big vortex. A big swirl on the water. <laughs> this is a massive fish. <laughs> oh dear. Second put in. I'm going to try and 
just sneak under this fish if I can. Just try and get underneath it Ooh, before it knows it. Oh, lovely, got it. <laughs> oh, that's a big fish. Oh, dear. <laughs> Almost, almost without any scales, that one. I can't pick it up, it's so big. Probably something like, I don't know. Probably something like, let's have a look at it. So I can show it to you. Oh, eight pound, I should think, or more. Let me just get rid of my rig so I can show you the fish. <laughs> I'll have to sort of cradle it and cuddle it and look at that. Second cast out on the bottom. Beautiful big mirror carp. Lovely fish. There's loads more where that came from. Let's have a look at the rig that I'm actually using. The hook is one of my favourites. It's a size 16, two Bettini 808. It's a very, very light hook, but incredibly strong. You know, you can catch big fish on this hook. It's got a fairly wide gape. Hooks do vary in size. You know, a 16 in one brand will be different gape to a 16 in another. So, so really size doesn't mean a lot. Just look at it. It's a good gape, very fine hook. And then the hook length is 0.14 millimetre, it's a browning senatan, that's something like probably four pounds, three and a half, four pound breaking strain, so it's a good strong line. And the hook length is about 10 inches long. That's roughly the, the, the size I like. I've got one number nine shot there, very, very simple rig, one number nine shot just above, once again, a four turn water knot. But can you see how neat and small it is? Really just very, very neat, four turn water knot, trimmed off nicely and then a number nine shot. And then above that and quite a way up, well away, because these fish are sometimes a bit, I've got, I need a fairly big float. I've got three quarters of a gram on there near enough. So there I've got an Olivet, which is 0.7 of a gram. This is brass Olivet, you have to use non-toxic. It's a brass, it's a, a Drennan, and it's, it's called an inline Olivet. There's an actual hole through the middle with a bit of silicon. And all you do is, I plug it with, a, with a, a float stem, you know, a fine carbon float stem to plug it. But you'll see that I can actually move that without damaging the line. If I hold that there, I can actually move this Olivet quite easily, but it, not so easy that it would move anyway. But I can actually move this along without any damage to the line at all. And that's important, so everything's simple. So we've just got an Olivet, 0.7 of a gram, one dropper, very, very simple. As I say, it's, it's three and a half metres deep, so you do need quite a big float. And the float I've chosen today, these are fabulous for big fish. This is a, a Drennan carp number five. Three quarters of a gram, lovely big thick bristle, cane bristle, you're using a big bait, dragging it on the bottom, you need a thick top antenna. Fine antenna will just drag under, but a very good strong float. Look at that stem on there. It's a carbon stem, very, very thick. And what I've added on the top is a small sleeve just above the eye. This is when the carp, sometimes when they roar off, if the hook comes out, you can actually smash and pull that eye out. So. A little bit of extra insurance, I'll put this small sleeve on the top, and that's a, that's a good tip. Always do that when you're fishing for big fish. We've got a good sturdy float that's not gonna break up. Going up to the actual connector, which is, that one is a Preston carp connector with number 10 high-vis elastic. So number 10 high-vis, beautiful elastic, it's all the way through those three sections, so whatever size fish, whether it's bream or carp, I can get them out. <laughs> I think it's another 
I think it's another bream this time. I just don't know what I'm going to hook next. It's so good. The fishing is fabulous. Of course, bream do come in a bit quicker than carp. But it still feels a good fish, this one. Do you know what? I forgot to tell you what line, what my main line was, didn't I? When I was running through the rig, well, I've got an 015. That's Browning Senatan, and it's 015 millimetres, high tech line. And that would be about probably four and a half pound breaking strain. Do you know, I should have bream. I think it's, you don't often catch them here, but I think it's another one of those small carp. I can't get anything right today, can I? I think it's one of those smaller carp. You, you, funnily enough, you, you know why I'm catching, why, if it is a small carp, they're frightened. All the fish, probably the big carp are mid-water, and this is the only place that these smaller carp can get any food. Yeah, it's a small carp. I say small, it's two, two or three pounds. It's in the net ever so quick. That's a three pound, well, I call that small today, doesn't I? But all solid muscle, beautiful fish, ever so hard. You know, when you, when you actually get hold of them, I like to keep the net, keep the net there so I don't damage the fish. Just lip hooked. Let me get out of the way so I can show that, oh dear, show that fish to camera. About a three pound mirror carp. That's why I thought it was a bream, because it came in easy. They're usually all six pounders here, but a lovely fish. Took sweet corn off the bottom, beautiful. <laughs> oh, this is definitely a bream. I know I've been wrong a lot of times today, but this is definitely a bream. And as I said, they do come in easier than the carp. Although they're big fish, you know, they're pound and a half. They just don't fight as hard as a... Look at this. You soon whiz this in. But this is one of the fish I'm after, targeting those on the bottom. They're where they can get some food, you see. They're actually where they can get some food. It's no good if they come up in the water competing with those carp. Yeah, lovely little bream. Probably only a pound and a half. Just took very nicely. Beautiful little fish. Took sweet corn as well, lovely. Perfect bait for these. Now this is the rig that I've been just been waiting all day to get onto. This is the, I'm not sure which depth the fish are going to be, but we call it my mid-water rig, you know, between anything between four and, and seven foot. Now the hook is the same as I had for fishing on the bottom. It's a 16, two Bettini 808, but I've stepped up the line a little bit. 015 for the hook length, which is sort of four and a half pounds, so it's pretty strong, but pretty standard with the way that I do it sort of a 10 inch, 10 inch hook length, and then that four turn water knot. There's a number 10 shot right on that water knot there, 10 inches away. And I've got the main line, which is 016 Browning Senatan, that sort of six pound breaking strain, so really strong. And then I've got another shot, a number eight shot, and then above that, a small bunch, you can see there, five number eight shot. They're sort of like a, a mini Olivet, but that's the bulk. And that's probably just about mid-water at the moment. I might vary it a little bit. You know, it just depends. I'm not sure where these fish are going to be. I think they're going to be everywhere, so I'm just not sure where they're going to be. And if we go up to the float, and I'm still using one of these Drennan Carp Fives with a carbon, good thick carbon stem. Also notice I've actually got three pieces of silicon to hold that float on, just in case one breaks, always put three on there. A little bit of silicon above that eye to stop that eye from tearing out. And then probably something like 20 inches from, from the float up to the elastic. Once again, a big Stonflow connector, Preston Stonflow connector and a number 12 elastic. That's a high vis elastic. This is a new one that I'm experimenting with from Browning. Just a high vis, but a bit more, just a bit more power. Big bush on the end, so 
as I say, I just can't wait to use this rig in combination with the pellets that I flavoured up earlier. I'm sure we're going to catch loads of big carp. Just couldn't wait to get on this, this surface rig, but still making sure I'm feeding. <laughs> One's taking it straight away. I put on one of those big pellets, those, you know those I flavoured with that Scopex flavour? Put one of them on, six feet deep, and it buried. But I've been feeding, remember, I've been feeding probably for three hours. Got a nice strong elastic on now. This is a number, number 12 elastic, so a bit more power than before. Lovely fishing. Just every time today, whatever I've done, there's been a fish. And this is a powerful fish. But as I say, this elastic is stronger, more power in the elastic, so you can bully the fish a bit more. Do you know what? I can't believe this. I just saw a flash of it. It's a massive tench, a massive tench in mid-water. Oh, dear. We're catching everything today. Look at that. Oh, dear. It's got to be five pounds. Four or five pounds of beautiful tench. Oh, and these are, well, I didn't expect this. I've had a day and I like that really. That is a monster. That is a monster tench. Taken on pellet, big pellet, six mil, super scopex up in the water. Let me get it on my lap because they're ever so hard to handle. I'll try and take the hook out while I just got it caught a little bit. Oh, that's it. That's, that's the joy of barbless hooks. Because they're barbless, they come out easily. Drop that pole down. Boy, am I getting some surprises today. That is just some beautiful fish. Look at that. Just take a look at that. Three to four pounds. Look at the lovely green, golden tinge. Wonderful fish. Six mil, van der Nine, flavoured with that super scopex in mid-water. Even these tench, you know, they're usually a bottom feeding fish, aren't they? They're coming up and competing with the carp. Straight away, what a good start to this mid-water session. I knew this would be the best part of the day, but I couldn't believe it when that big tench took that pellet in mid-water. You know, even, even those, those sort of fish. And straight away I had a bite then, I went out. You've got to be careful, these pellets are very soft. So as soon as you strike, you've lost your pellet. You know, as soon as you get that initial bit of a bite, your pellet disappears. Lovely. Now that pellet is suspended in mid-water just waiting for a fish to come along and take it. And all the time, of course, we've been feeding over the top. And even at, at five or six foot deep, I suspect there's not many pellets getting to that depth. A little bite then, trying to wait until I get a positive bite, a positive sign. And what I've done is I've put two pouchfuls in, two good pouchfuls, and then wait for those to sink. And then wait for the fish to start searching around. I want the fish to drop down a little bit. This must be the friendliest swan in the world, this one. I've never, it's, it's just so lovely. It doesn't hiss at you or anything. It's just a wonderful swan. Oh, I'm into another fish. <laughs> so busy looking after the swan. What I did this time was actually still using a big pellet, that uh, six mil with that super Scopex flavouring. But what I did was I actually shallowed the float up a bit. I suspected, I mean, it's getting near the end of the day now, and we'd, we'd probably call this the last fish. It's been so good, the fishing. That, oh, it's another good fish. 
that what I thought, I'd shallow up just to see if the fish have come up in the water. Oh, I just unshipped there. I think I've unshipped too early. It's really pulling hard now. But they're all lovely fish, all good quality carp, competing after those pellets. I mean, that's the thing. Always, always say it, that, that get the fish competing for the food and then they're easy to catch. Look at that one, that's really whistling round. I've unshipped, but I'm hanging on. That really is now out at maximum. Just about. And the pole I'm using today is, it's a browning, of course. It's called a, a CC910, and it's the sort of pole that you can use for, for either match fishing or carp. It can do both. Look at that. Even though I'm using that 16 elastic and putting a lot of pressure on, it still takes some getting in these fish. Shall I feed or shall we call this the last fish? The problem is, look at that swan round again, look, so friendly. He, no good, he won't eat carp. The thing about this, I mean, this fishing is so fantastic. It's just, oh, it's brilliant. It's not like making a film, it's, you just like coming out and enjoying yourself. But that big pellet, of course, pellets, you know why these expanders are so good? It's because they're so soft. You know, they almost, almost melt in the fish's mouth when it goes to take it. Got it, get, getting it near there. And if you have a look just under the float, look, can you see those, those shot? I've actually pulled the float down. It doesn't matter, you can always experiment, pull the float down, try different things. Got this fish almost, and I really am putting some pressure on this fish now. <laughs> It's really going, you can listen to the noise it's making. It's wonderful fishing, it really is. I won't want to pack up. I think we'll probably have to call this the last one. Otherwise the cameraman's going to run out of film. Look at this. Hey, do you know what, I had that fish tamed and it shot off again. They're all, they are beautiful fish here, without a doubt. They're beautiful fish here at Barford. Big carp. Where can you go and catch carp six pound plus? Every cast. <laughs> and I am putting, believe me, I'm putting a load of pressure on this fish. Just see the float there. Lovely float, the fish is pulling, I'm pulling. This might be its last. I think this will be a good one to finish on if we get this one in the net. But See, that line is working well as well. Six pound main line, four and a half pound hook length. So I can put some pressure on this fish. Good elastic, always match things up. Fabulous fight, you know, just, my arms are aching. <laughs> Lovely. This is what fishing is all about. It's just sheer pleasure, but have you noticed how as soon as I go in, I get a bite, it's all action. And that's all due to feeding, nothing else. Just pure feeding the right product. Lovely big mirror, this one. Oh, just hook behind the fin at first and then off. <laughs> Beautiful fish. This will take some lifting. Oh, another one. Probably nearly 10 pound, that one. Beautiful big fish. <laughs> just going to be very careful with him. He's just hooked inside the mouth. They're all been like that today. Get this hook out. And I think this will be a great fish to finish up on. You know, it's been fabulous fishing. Loads and loads of fish. Just let me get rid of my pole. That's not easy. When you're catching big fish like this. I'll just show the fish to camera. <laughs> lovely, once again, a lovely big mirror. Probably, oh, they're all fight. What sort of weight is that one? They really are hard to control. But look at that. Probably six, seven, eight pounds. Eight, eight pounds, probably, that one. <laughs> there, what a lovely fish to finish up on.
Let's just have a quick look at some of the fish that I've caught today. I mean, I've caught silverfish, but uh, just can't show everything to camera, but these are the carp, and I'm guessing 50 pounds of, of carp and tench because they're all big fish. I'm just going to release them into the water, just down there. <laughs> tench, carp. Oh, beautiful fish, look at those. I mean, that's just in a very, very short spell of fishing. That sort of 50 pound of carp plus probably 20 pound of silverfish. And it just all adds up to a really successful day at pole fishing.